Welcome to this Walkera Runner 250 video. In the previous videos we actually installed a radio receiver so we could use it with our own radio and we've looked at how you can actually look at the settings on the controller itself using MultiWii 2.2 code. In this one I want to talk more about first person view and how you use this craft with your existing goggles or with your ground station or whatever it is you have and also we're going to install the on-screen display module. Now this OSD module didn't come pre-installed installed in this version and you can buy different versions of the Walkera 250 that include the OSD already but as we didn't get ours on it and I have to say a very big thank you to Banggood for not only supplying the Walkera 250 but also for sending the OSD for me to fit what we're going to do is we're actually going to pop this onto the craft now there's actually a gap underneath which we talked about in the first video there that's actually going to fit the OSD so we're going to pop that on that's a relatively straightforward thing to do and we're also going to talk about the channels that are available on this craft to transmit FPV on and that will help you figure out what channel you need to be selecting to work with whatever goggle or receiver set you have at home. Now on this it actually allows you by uh, using dip switches so the actual transmitter itself that sends the video has three dip switches on it that allows you to select between one of eight frequencies. Now here in the manual as we put it up, here you can actually see the different positions of each switch depending on what you want to have it set up at. So in this video let's talk about frequencies, then let's install the OSD and set it up and then finally we'll go and we'll actually try it and show you it working with some fat chart goggles, with some boss cam receivers and also with a black pearl FPV display as well. Just a point to note, as I'm recording this, there's a new version of the Walkera 250 coming. So as well as not only being able to buy the basic version like this and add the OSD later on, there's also versions of this where the OSD comes installed and there's new versions planned which include the GPS receiver. And as I've talked about in some of the other videos, the GPS receiver in this will allow it to do things like GPS hold and GPS home. So fingers crossed they actually release the GPS unit as a separate purchasable thing like this on-screen display and if they do then we'll get hold of one and pop it onto this and show you it all working. So FPV frequencies, let's do those first. So you'll have heard in FPV speak or if you've been looking at the forums or if it's you're new to FPV you might not be aware but there's actually 32 channels in the 5.8 gigahertz band that we're allowed to use for FPV and they go it bands A, B, E and F. And those four bands are pretty much mapped over all of the different pieces. Now a 32 band receiver, something like a Black Pearl, will actually be able to listen to any of these frequencies. So something like the Black Pearl receiver that we'll look at at the end of the video, actually we can set it up for the individual band we're interested in and we can set it up for the individual channel as well. Each channel itself, A, B, E and F, has eight available frequencies within that band and they don't run sequentially so it isn't that the old band A is the lowest frequencies and old band F is the highest frequencies they have a selection between them. So having four lots of eight gives us those 32 channels. The interesting thing is if a channel is very close to each other then they'll actually work fine. So for example my little quadcopter here, this runner, is set by default to transmit at 5.733 or 5733 megahertz. Now that is the very first frequency in band B. But if you go down and look at band F, which is where a lot of the immersion RC and fat shark systems sit, the first frequency in band F is 5740. So it's actually very very close to the frequency that the model is set to. And that's close enough where you can actually get a picture. So even if you don't have exactly the frequency you need, if you can choose on the Walkera the one that's closest, you should still get a signal. Now, if you want to know more about the 32 channels and how all the different systems map to it and where fat chart sits, where boss cam fits and other pieces, then there is another video that goes into it in some depth and I've also provided a PDF that you can download for your own reference in future. So what I'll do is I'll put a link to that video in the description underneath this video if you want to go and find out more.
So now we know that the default transmission is going to be on 5733 MHz or 5.733 GHz, depending on how you want to say it, and that is so close to the first band in band F, which is 5.74 GHz, pretty confident that if I select the first channel on things like my Fat Shark, on my Boss Cam and others, I'll be able to see the picture fine. So next, let's go and actually install the OSD into the bottom of the craft, and then we'll come back and we'll actually power it up, and we'll start having a look at those FPV systems and seeing how they work. So, back to the table. So we could actually install the OSD without taking the bottom plate off, but for clarity in the video, I'm actually going to remove mine. Now to remove the bottom plate is really straightforward. There are six screws, two at the front, two at the bottom of the front set of legs and two at the bottom of the back set of legs. To remove it, all you need is a little one and a half millimeter hex driver or Allen key. Once you've removed those screws, then the bottom just lifts off. And here now we have access to the inside of the craft and that's where our OSD is going to go. So all we need to do is line up the side that has the connectors with the side that has the connectors on the bottom of the craft and then we're just going to pop it on and push it in and it should push in without too much trouble there it is it's home so that's stuck in and then we have two little screws uh, nicely also I don't know if you can see this on the video it actually has some Loctite on it which is brilliant what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop those screws in each side and then I'm going to replace the bottom plate and then we're ready to turn it over turn it on and then see if it's working. So here we are with the three bits of FPV tech that we're going to have a look at. The first one we'll take a look at is my trusty Fat Shot goggles. These are Predator 2s and they're set to the first channel on the Fat Shark system. And if I can get it so it works, there we are. You can kind of see, if I can get it in the right place for the lens, uh, that we actually have a beautiful picture. So it works great with Fat Shark. The next one we'll try is, this is a little 32 channel receiver. Now I'll put a link into the other videos where we've done this. Uh, you, you can press and hold the button here to scan and every time I press and scan, what it's actually doing is it's finding another radio frequency that's very close to the one that we're using. So if I just scan again, there we go beautiful picture there we go and you can see the on-screen display overlaid on the top with the artificial horizon and everything else so again with Boscan systems they work fine these are little um, Hobby King quantum goggles that we're using here last piece of kit then that we're trying it with this is a fly sight black pearl FPV display now this is one that I use usually mounted on top of a tripod to do demos with but here we can actually see the um, the setup and how it's all working now interestingly it is definitely set up as though we are using a GPS because we have our GPS coordinates and up here at the top we also have the number of GPS satellites that we can't see so um, it's nice and it's actually working and again to kind of uh, just, I'm not sure if we're going to get a great picture. There we go. That's probably the best idea. So hopefully now that proves that it actually works not only with things like Black Pearl, but it also works with Fat Shark, and it also works with some of the other receiver kit like Boss Cam as well. So in this video, we've looked at the on-screen display, we've talked about FPV frequencies, we've also had a look at how the FPV frequencies work, then we installed the on-screen display, and then finally, we've just put our model in the window, and we're using it inside with all of these different receiver systems to show it all working. Last thing again, just like to say a very big thank you to Banggood for sending me the on-screen display to try, and hopefully for those of you that are thinking of doing it, you now know what it looks like and how to set it up. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.